Hey, welcome back. After you've configured your general settings for the plugin, you then need to configure any other options that you wish to use. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll look at global settings. So global settings will apply to every single listing that you send to eBay, unless you have overridden them at the specific product level. So the first thing we do here is we'll supply my PayPal email address. As you can see, it's a fake one. A standard return policy. So let's see, what should we do? Uh, send me all of my stuff back. You pay. There we go. So this will be applied to every listing where we have enabled the return policy. HTML templates, quite a special feature. Um, if you want to use your own eBay specific template, which maybe has your store policies, you know, look and feel of your shop, you can actually put the source code directly in here and you can use some keywords which will replace, uh, be replaced when the listing is sent to eBay. So for example, you could type something like description, which would be in part of your HTML code and that tag would then be replaced with the actual description from your product in the KubeCart store. So it slots it straight into the template. Really useful feature if you want to use this. Templates are optional, you don't have to use them. Um, you could just import the product directly as it looks on your KubeCart um, page. Um, but it's there in case people want to use their own branded pages. Once you've put in the settings, update your global settings. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is actually configure our actual inventory. So, we'll let that save, there we go. So inventory settings. This lists all of the inventory you have in KubeCart. And you will need to configure each one of these items before you can list uh, that particular product on eBay. Now, my, my, uh, that might sound like a fairly big task, uh, but you have to recall that you will only do this once in most occasions unless you need to change any specific listing settings. So you may need to invest some time doing this in the first instance depending on how much inventory you have. Um, obviously it depends on how long it's going to take. So today I'm going to show you two products. I'll show you them on the store first. We're going to list my Green King IPA because we love IPA and I'm going to show you some pens as well. So Green King IPA, it's a fairly standard listing. We have multiple images and we have a description which is fairly straightforward but it does have some HTML in it. So we have uh, you know, a larger size font for the text here and we have a standard font here. So that's done using HTML to code. The second product is Pen. Now, Pen's a special product because we're using options. Now, options in KubeCut allow you to, to put uh, various options against a product. So here we have three defined. We have color, material, and size. <coughs> now, it's important I show you this one today because the plugin does actually support variations, which means you can list all of these variations on eBay as one item, which means your listing fees are greatly reduced. Okay, so back to our list, and let's configure our IPA first. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is enable this item for listing. The very next thing we have to do is we have to find a category to put this item in. So type in a keyword and then press category search and it will return listings from eBay's API. I'm going to put this in, well, bottles and pots, why not? You must then update the eBay settings after choosing your category. Very important you do this because it loads the conditions, the item conditions from the API after you have saved your category. It does this because the item conditions vary depending on the category you choose. So make sure you choose your category first. Now, the price 
uh, by default it will use the same price as your product in your cube car inventory but some people may want to list a slightly higher price on eBay just so they can cover their costs so I'm going to make this £1.75 <coughs> choose your shipping method I'm going to use Royal Mail first class standard your shipping methods will vary depending on the country that you're in uh, this is why we have to update the uh, shipping methods on the general tab <coughs> um, once you configure cube cards <coughs> so delivery costs uh, I'm going to charge the same as the product and an extra 25 pence for every extra item this is useful because we use it in multiple listings um, so if you list a quantity of 10 you know and someone buys two they'll charge £1.75 for the first item and an extra 25 pence for the second the dispatch time this is n the amount of time it's going to take you to process the order before it gets dispatched it's a general setting on eBay um, obviously the shorter the period the better it needs to be at least one day um, you can't specify zero so uh, I'm gonna say it's gonna take me three days to process this order before I ship it the eBay title um, is quite a good feature because we can actually specify a different title than the product name in cube cards so I'm gonna call this my open can of IPA mm, yummy it's a used item and you'll notice that it's taken this value directly from the product um, if we go and look at the product page in a moment you'll see that it's already been configured in KubeCut as a used item um, it will always try and match these up to save you having to choose them um, once you've selected a category but double check it's correct just in case there was an issue uh, getting it matched I'm gonna send this as a buy it now and seven days is fine um, now quantities quantities are awesome um, because you don't actually specify the quantity of items that you want to list you actually select the minimum quantity you want to send to eBay and the maximum quantity you want to send to eBay and depending on your inventory stock levels it will choose an appropriate amount in that range if you don't have enough inventory uh, in your KubeCut store it will not list the item um, if you have more inventory than the maximum quantity you want to list it will list the maximum and it will find a number in that range depending on the stock that you have at that moment in time it's important to note that for auctions you can only list one uh, so you need to set both the minimum and maximum to one if you actually selected more than one for an auction you'll actually get an error when you try to send that item to eBay the returns policy defaults to yes um, because most business sellers are actually required to use returns um, <coughs> now if we leave this box blank it's going to use our default returns policy that we configured in the global settings tab uh, I'm going to leave this blank for now because I want to use my global policy but if you have uh, you know a, an item that requires a special type of return policy then you can specify that here you know, or even if you don't want to accept returns for just one product you can do that here as well so it's quite a nice feature just being able to override the global settings just for that odd item that may be a special case payment va values currently the only value supported is PayPal and again global values PayPal email address it will use the default value in the global settings unless you put an override here so you could use this if you want to list the same product um, under multiple uh, with multiple payment gateways so you know you may want to sell an item on behalf of a friend put in the friend's PayPal address that's the PayPal address it's going to use uh, again it's just an override so you don't have to specify it here assuming you've configured the global settings and the very last option is HTML templates um, in the global settings tab we have our template if you want to use the template brilliant just set this to yes if you leave it as no it's going to take the HTML code directly from the product listing and uh, use that instead update your settings I'm going to go to a, a new video and I will continue explaining how this works